everyone. I'm your host, Diva Danielle, and this is Community Link AZ. Thank you for joining the show. This is the internet show that's a resource for you to people, products, and services in your own backyard you might not even know of. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode. Each week, I'll introduce you to someone who is helping to make a positive difference in the community. We're going to have some fun, learn something new, and connect in a positive way. Let's start the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Community Link AZ. I'm your host, Eva Danielle, and I got another great show for you. If you haven't done so, I want to thank you first and foremost for stopping by my YouTube channel, but make sure you subscribe because I don't want you to miss any episodes. Also, go to Facebook. I have a page there that you can like, Community Link AZ. That way you'll be able to keep up with me and know what I'm doing in the community and who I have coming up on the show. Today, we've got a fantastic guest. This is a good friend of mine. Her name is Bobby Sudbury. Bobby is someone in the community who gave back in a huge way, taking a personal tragedy and turning it into something that benefits others going forward. We're going to talk about her organization, which is called Katie's Way, why she started it, and where she is today, because things have definitely changed, but in a good way, I would like to think, right? Yes, I, I do have to say that things, um, despite COVID and everything mm -hmm. like that, things are still moving along and we're still out there on the front lines helping people that are having issues with unhealthy relationships and whatnot. Yeah. Well, let's tell everyone a little bit about what Katie's Way is and why you started it. And like I said, it is from something tragic, so you can be as open as you want to be and as free, or you can just let us know the very basics if you want. It's up to you. Thank you very much, Danielle. I appreciate that. Uh, basically, we are on a mission to advocate for healthy relationships by providing education skills and tools for youth and their allies. Okay, Because as much as we educate young people about the importance of healthy relationships and how to identify an abusive relationship, it's real important that we um, educate adults so they can be there for the youth when the youth needs to turn to somebody to help them out or help them navigate. Okay, so. Um, it, you know, and we, we came to this, and we decided to do this uh, after, unfortunately, the loss of our daughter to teen dating violence. Um, she had started dating a young man when she was 16 years old. Okay, they were juniors in high school, and you know, it was a it, it was a cute little you know young dating relationship going on. You know, all the typical little hand holding, door opening, you know, calling on the phone, talking and stuff like that, and. It seemed really nice and sweet in the beginning, okay, but unfortunately things made a, a, a bad turn, a bad turn, and that bad turn came about when he uh, had become very possessive and jealous and uh, was demanding all of her time and really, uh, you know, wanted to be with her every minute and couldn't stand her being not being with him. He became controlling. Very, very controlling. You know, exercising power over her and the relationship and everything. And as time went by, we were identifying this and we were talking to her and everything. But, you know, there was a lot that we didn't know when this was going on. You know, but we did. We tried our best and all that. And eventually, as um, the relationship went on, when it got neared like a year, uh, she did end the relationship. So Actually. she broke up with him. Yes, she did break up with him. You know, and it was after she broke up with him that things went horribly wrong, you know. And, you know, it was because there were certain things we just didn't know as adults and, you know, and most of the population doesn't know this, you know. And this is why we are out educating people because, see, the most dangerous time for a victim in an abusive relationship is when that relationship is ending. The experts will tell you your life just became 75% more dangerous. Okay? And that's because you've got an abuser that exercised control over the relationship and that other person, and now that that other person is leaving, okay, they're losing control. And then, like in our case and many other cases, the abuser spins out of control and then goes to just horrible measures. And so he started attacking her in public, the police were called, reports were taken and everything like that. But unfortunately at the time, they did not feel that they needed to arrest him. Okay. It's interesting that he was showing all these signs of aggression, aggression, but they didn't feel that they needed to take action to remove him from her as a possible harm. Right, and, and I truly believe it has a lot to do with minimizing. They minimized, you know, the situation and whatnot, you know, with teenagers and everything, and that's a very dangerous thing to do, especially because teenagers can be very, very unpredictable. Can be volatile. Yes, yeah. very, very much so because their brains are not fully formed. Okay, our brains are not fully formed until we're 25, 26 years old. So 
So, you know, we have to really take these matters seriously. And so, you know, what eventually happened is we had received a threat, uh, the school had received a threat actually, and then we received a call from uh, Phoenix PD and uh, they had suggested we try to go get an order of protection for Katie because Daniel had threatened to kill her and himself, you know. So, jumped right down to the courthouse, did what I needed to do, was denied an order of protection. Okay, now that's fascinating because you would think all of these things that you laid out that he has done verbally, physically, and let, yet the court system who you're relying on as a form of protection by law is denying you your right yeah. of protection. And, and we could have gotten an order of protection had the judge taken the situation as serious as what he had read. Okay, because we did, I did lay it all out right. for him. So, and nonetheless, uh, we had no order of protection or anything like that. We hunkered down. We tried to protect her and everything, and um, the water really calmed. Everything calmed. We weren't hearing from him or anything like that. So we kind of thought, all right, you know, and she felt the same way. So, so she you was, felt like a little bit of safeness. You let your guard down. Yeah. You know, like we her, back to normal. Exactly. We thought things, we thought that he kind of just blew it all off and, okay, fine. So she wants to go back to school. You know, we talk to her about it and everything. We make sure a safety plan is in place. And it, and it was and everything. She had a right to school and a right home from school. Wow. And um, the actual day of, what happened was her right home from school was detained. Okay. Um, he offered to, you know, he told her, he says, you know, you can wait with me, but, you know, I've got to, I've got to do this, right? Well, she decides she wants to go on home, and so she grabs a friend of hers. His name is Ray, and she walks home with him. So she's still safety planning mm -hmm. because she's got a buddy system, right? And so the problem was, is that his house was about eight houses before ours. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she walked into his house and then she walked on home. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, Daniel was laying in wait in the alley. Mm -hmm. And as she walked by him, okay, he came out and he had a shotgun and a duffel bag. And um, I don't know that I'd get through the rest of this interview if I had to tell you what happened after there. So I think people could pretty yeah, much put that absolutely. together. But from there um, is where Katie's Way was born, as well as Katie's Law. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about Katie's Law so people will understand. We got an understanding of your story, and it's so tragic. And you would think that you know a mother that goes through something like this would want to shrink back and just sort of you know take all this in, you know, wallow in the sorrow of her daughter passing. But no, you turned it around, and you're educating other people. Well, I did do that for about three weeks. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did I did crawl into a hole. Actually, I wanted to crawl up and die with her, to be perfectly honest with you. You know, because it doesn't feel right. No. So, but, you know, me and my sister and my our oldest daughter was sitting there, and we started thinking and, and talking and everything, and we realized that this is really an issue. You know, looking on the internet and everything, and we decided we wanted to do something about it. And then I was contacted by the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence, and they had been trying to get a law passed for five years. Five years, and they asked me to testify before the 2009 legislature, and I did. And fortunately, it did get passed this time. Mm -hmm. you know? So now, since 2009, Katie's Law exists, and basically what it does is it pro provides protection for those in dating relationships, so long as the relationship is romantic or sexual in nature. Mm -hmm. Well, not all dating relationships are sexual in nature, nor should they be, but dating, by definition, and it's for current dating relationships as well as former dating relationships. If the abuser is harassing, they can get an order of protection. They can get uh, the abuser can get arrested. The victim can get an order of protection. Um, there's a three strikes version to the law where if somebody's charging the victim under this law for a third time, it could be a felony. And I've seen people go to prison anywhere from a year to seven and a half years for being charged with the victim under this law. Interesting. Yeah. It's good. So yeah. So. Uh, a lot of good has come from it. Um, we've worked with, uh, you know, we've kind of exposed ourselves to at least nearly 100,000 people, if not more than that, because we've had a lot of media appearances and everything. Mm -hmm. But person to person, we are, we're close to 100,000 mark in the time that we've been doing Katie's Way, and that's throughout Arizona, and probably maybe 5% of it is throughout the rest of the country. You're well, doing so much. Here. Yes. I love that. I just want people to understand that, you know, this is what the community is all about. Individuals like Bobby who have taken something that was personal and turned it around to make change so no one else has to feel her pain that she felt because it's horrible that a mother or anyone would have to go through something like this. 
How can the community going forward support you? What do you need? What are you looking to do as you move forward that the community can rally around you to help make that change continuous? Well, yeah, right now, uh, things are really tough on a lot of people and a lot of companies and organizations and everything. Um, funding is very difficult for us right now. Uh, so we definitely, monetary donations are greatly appreciated. Uh, you can go to our website, hit the donate button. Um, let's see, uh, we can also take in, you know, like office equipment, supplies and stuff like that, in-kind donations. Uh, on Amazon, uh, we have a, uh, where people can sign oh, up Oh, is it the Amazon Wish? Uh, Amazon, Amazon Smiles. Wish? Okay, Amazon, Amazon Smiles. Okay. And then we also have the Amazon Wish List right. as well, where, um, you know, we have a wish list of things that we need so people can go there. They can also select us to, you know, give to us through Amazon, but also through Fry's as well. Oh, with the gift card system. Yeah, Fry's Rewards oh, and that. everything. Yeah, so, uh, you know, those are some passive ones. If, People want to sponsor us or have us come out and do a presentation, get the word out there. Uh, volunteers, oh my goodness. Volunteers, we always need volunteers. We've got so many things going on. Um, people, you know, just working really hard to, you know, help us get that funding, but then also help us get the word out, help people understand. COVID didn't cancel Katie's way. <laughs> we're still out there. We're I'm taking care of business. I'm not COVID didn't cancel Katie's way. Yeah. You are. You're a mom on a mission. This is Bobby Sidberry. She is a mom on a mission. It's katiesway.org? Yes. Katiesway.org is the website. Go there. Read up on the story. Get to know them. And just support in any way you can. You can also follow them on social media. She posts a lot of different things that are encouraging as well as informative, so that way you'll be in the loop. Again, I thank you so much for being on the show. This is fantastic. It was just nice to sit down and talk with you for a it's few minutes. Great. I'm so sorry it went by so fast, but that's what the time does. It just flies when you're having fun and you're getting out good information. Again, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything, and like my page on Facebook, Community Link AZ. I'm your host, Diva Danielle. This has been another great episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week.